Welcome back to another episode of The System Podcast. Now, we actually took on the feedback and advice from our followers and subscribers to talk more generally about betting. If you're listening to this podcast and you have no idea what we do, that is absolutely fine. This podcast is going to be designed for you to gain a better understanding about betting in general and most specifically, multi-bets. A massive craze at the moment in Australia. We talk about people's understanding, their mentality, the mathematics around multi-bets, same game multis, and we also talk about the tricks that the bookies are using to continually get you to do multi-bets. We also speak about something that has been released as a law that the bookies must follow, and we are pretty interested to see how they're going to manipulate this in their favor. Once again, if you have any questions for us or you wanna know more about our services, all relevant links will be in the description of both Spotify and YouTube. The best form of contact for us is our Instagram. We hope you enjoyed this one. Alrighty, so we're back again, guys. This is our fourth podcast, but only our third filming session. Did break one of them up into two parts. Um, nice to be back. How are we all? Yeah, very well. Good night. Yeah, I know JP had a nice weekend away. What did you do this weekend, Steve? I uh, just sent home winners on Saturday. <laughs> Beautiful. 20 units outlaid, 27 units return. Love to see it. I thought we'd kick off this week. We usually start with something, you know, flavor of the month or whatever. Um, and I thought we'd start with multis this week. I've seen, I feel, I don't know if it's my algorithm or my Twitter or on my TikToks or whatever, but I feel like I'm just seeing multis everywhere. And I feel like if I'm seeing multis everywhere, the punters out there are just going to be yeah. seeing multis, multis, multis. And I'm not, not talking about winning multis obviously, but I'm just talking about multis. They're fucking everywhere. So I just thought maybe today th- there'd probably be people watching this that have never seen what we talk about. You know, let's just talk about some general betting shit and multis are definitely the topic at the moment. The, the bookies are promoting them. People are posting them. Everyone's chasing those green ticks. I know Steve's going to talk about a nice little innovation that sports bet have bought in for their multis as well. So let's just start with multis and the thing that obviously annoys us, right? We're, we're here, we're, we want to make profit, we want to change the way people think about punting, blah, blah, blah. And you just can't make money in the long term betting on multis. And I thought maybe Steve could give a little bit of insight into why you can't win if you're just always chasing multis. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, multis, as you said, they are the popular bet. Everyone loves doing them. Like it's a common chat between, you know, your mates at the pub is what multi we're putting on. It's not what, what are we betting on? It's what multi yeah. are we putting on tonight? That's just the automatic go-to, generally same game as if, if the footy's on. Everyone wants a multi. One single bet is never enough. And the problem with it, I mean, it's, it's a bit different with same game multis, but I'll just start with standard multis. Why anyone would ever put on a standard multi? I'm, I've tried to come up with a reason why. I think I've found one, but I'm not sure. Um, but first I want to say why you shouldn't be putting multis on to begin with. Um, and basically if you've got, let's take, you've got a five leg multi, right? And the first leg's paying $2, the second leg's paying $3, whatever. Basically you're accumulating your winnings from every single leg that gets up, rolling it into the next leg, right? So if you put $50 on a multi, right, that's paying $10 or something like that. Um, and the first leg gets up and say that first leg was paying $2, then if you had to just bet singularly on that one bet, you'd be up $100. You'd have $100 in your betting account now. Wait, 50 times 2 or 100 times 2? 50 times 2. So you'd be up 50. Well, yeah, sorry. So you've, got, you've got $100. Yeah, profit, yeah. Profit, but 100 yeah. in your account. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. just to clarify. Yeah, no. Nah. So you'd have 100 in your account. You'd be, profited, you'd be yeah. profit 50. If you'd got that first leg up and then the second leg comes around, the second leg's paying $1.50, I don't reckon many people would put $100 on that second leg at $1.50. They'd just go, oh, like, I'm going to put $100 on this. You wouldn't. You absolutely wouldn't. But that's essentially what you're doing with a multi. You're rolling in every single profit or every single leg's return into that next leg every time, which ultimately, as we've sort of touched on, or we've talked about like privately, it's just terrible money management. Yeah. It's terrible, terrible money management. You've, you've lost all structure. All of a sudden, if your unit size is $50, then that's okay. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone can have their own unit size depending on your bankroll, etc. But then all of a sudden, you've gone one unit on the first leg and then you've gone two units on the second leg. If that gets up, now you're sitting at $150 return. So now that you're putting th- three units on the third leg and it just continues to multiply. So ultimately, you're just always going to be putting like you're always going to be out of out of whack for how much the easiest way to like dumb it down i guess for somebody that doesn't know what a unit is or just to relate it to your own betting is like think about how often do you back let's just let's just use like a standard five leg multi how often do you back five winners in a row any bet like i'm talking if you're betting on your horses you're betting on the afl the nrl nba whatever how often if you went through your betting history i don't want to talk about multis just how often do you back five winners in a row 
Mm. The most profitable punters in the world yeah. rarely back five winners in a row. You don't need to. So to win a multi, you have to <laughs> That's get... That's the they, they all have to be in a row. Yes. And when you're sitting there logically listening to Steve going, yeah, he's right. If I put 50 bucks on the first selection, maybe I would put that whole 100 on the next selection. But if that won at $3, mm. there's no way that I'm going to put the whole 300 on the next bet, right? Yep. And that's the mindset you have to bring into when you are putting on multis because that's exactly what you're doing without actually seeing it. And the only reason people put on the multis is because they see the big number down the bottom. Mm-hmm. They go, oh, if, if all six of these win, mm. you know, we're going to Vegas. And it's like, Mate. with it, you've got... One of the worst is when you get to the last leg and the last leg's paying a dollar twenty or something yeah. like that. Imagine that. If if you're on the last leg of a five leg multi and the return is let's just say it's a thousand dollars or something from fifty bucks, you've got whatever a thousand divided by one two, you you'd have nine hundred dollars on a one dollar twenty selection yeah. if your last leg is a dollar twenty. Like no one in their right mind is gonna go, Oh, I'm gonna try and make a hundred bucks and outlay nine hundred of my not. own money. You'd never do that. But with a multi the book is somehow hide, like hide the idea that that's actually what you're doing. Like when you break it down, that is what you're doing. It, it all comes back to probability, as Tom said. Mm. If you don't hit 100% of those bets in that multi, it's a loss. So again, if you get to the, the fourth out of the fifth leg, firstly, you should be hedging it if you're doing multis. Yeah. Firstly, don't fucking do multis because you're not going to win. But that's the thing. They wouldn't put 900 on it. Mm. So why wouldn't they cash out? It's yeah. the same. It's a. It's the same principle. The, the only time. thing is, like, and you know, we we've obviously spoken to so many punters about stuff like this, but they only see it as, and you see, you'll see comments on Twitter and yeah. stuff as well. Especially, so many people do post their multi with one leg left, like, you know, all the Facebook groups, cash or ride, guys. Yeah, right. And so many, yeah, but so many people are like, oh, it was only a ten dollar bet. Doesn't matter, man. Like, yes. you, you could win two grand, and it's yeah. like, no, this is not a ten dollar bet mm. because right now, as Steve said, you have nine hundred bucks or whatever on the last leg. So you have an opportunity, as you said, you should be hedging out of that. Yep. You should, if it's a two-leg outcome, like if it's a AFL head-to-head, you should be backing the opposition. Yep. Like you should put yourself in a position where, because you've got to a position where you've had four legs win in a row. So you you've backed four winners, yeah. Correct. So you've backed yeah. four winners in a row, and you still don't have a return. Yep. So you need to be locking that money in. Yeah. But the reality is, like people don't think about it that way because they only bet ten bucks. Well, so their betting yeah. account only goes down by ten dollars, yes. but they don't look at it holistically. It's like, no, no, dude, you, your betting account technically has nine hundred dollars in it, and you've put all nine hundred on this last leg. Yeah, like, and for people not understanding why it's you have nine hundred, if he let's say it's a head-to-head selection on the last leg, you've got North Melbourne or Hawthorne to beat North Melbourne last leg dollar twenty. If you went and backed North Melbourne on a different agency, hedge them for the same return a thousand dollars, you're going to outlay whatever. And then suddenly you're going to get a guarantee, whatever, 600, 750, yeah. 600, whatever the maths is. But that that is right there. That's your opportunity. You don't have $10. That is a $700 potential Correct. win. So you are 100% gambling that, that money. I also think though there's a there's a part of it which is concerning in itself that people don't actually know how multis work. Yes. Like they don't understand that it's rolling your money onto it's the next one, into the next together. one, into the next one. Yeah. So they don't see it as having a return until and only if all five win yes and it, like it'd be interesting to have chat to some people that you know probably didn't understand how a multi works they just see it as obviously the odds are multiplying together and then as steve said like we're, even when he touched on same gamers they, they're not even multiplying them together they're taking well, into account and you know? i got a funny thing we'll put it on the screen you sent me a multi of someone who won and he showed the return of the multi oh, and yeah. the odds of the multi but then he blurred out his stake so he, yeah everyone he didn't, knew he what didn't it, want anybody in the group <laughs> to see how much he put on stake, the multi. i guess no, it was a big no, stake. because big you can one. calculate yeah. it just fucking... It was, like yeah, a five, yeah. it was like a 500 to one multi and he had 100 on it. It was like $51,000 oh collector or whatever. Yeah. And he obviously didn't want anybody to know that he'd put 100 bucks on a 500 to one multi. So he colored out the yes. $100 stake, but didn't realize that because we could see the odds well, and the return that every, <laughs> he everybody could, understand how everybody could right. work out how much he'd put on it. Oh, some but the, of the there's comments two there were scathing. <laughs> there's two problems there's with that, problem. right? There's the first problem is he didn't cover his boost and his boost was like... Yeah, huge. 30 to 40 percent which we've spoken about before if anyone's getting those big boosts on accounts yeah. you're yeah, a loser massive losing punter not a loser no, but you're yeah. a losing punter <laughs> them personally are not a loser yeah. but, their but account that is a loser. as well if you're putting a hundred on that and everyone has different bank rolls yeah if but you're if doing you, that you'd want to no, have no. a massive bank roll if you're doing i hope that. so but adding to that the problem is is that he knows he's a losing gambler that's why he's he covering knows his stake. He's, he knows he's a problematic gambler because yeah. he's that's why he's Correct. hiding the stake that's 100%. why my first reaction yeah, he's was like this bet's be ridiculous yeah. yeah so like, there's I no way i can show anybody, anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah literally i'm not proud of this bet he's yeah. literally not proud of the bet like he wouldn't want to show his wife girlfriend whatever yeah but 
Yeah, he's, he's, it, he's yeah. still has. <laughs> when you delve deeper into it, and like you said, why people do them, it is purely just for the payout, I think. Yeah. That's well, that's why people. Or, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's, that's why, why people sitting on the pokies. Why are you buying a yeah. Tats Lotto ticket? It's fucked. Yeah. Just you for, want the just payout. For the payout. Yeah. And you've yeah. said the one that for gamblers, which I think is the most, the best thing I've heard in terms of someone asking themselves this before they place a bet. Instead of thinking about, and we spoke to a guy that's going to be joining both our things this week. He thinks about the consequence of the bet Correct. rather than the potential winnings. Mm-hmm. And if you're doing that, you're going to be a. A, a more successful punter by not losing as much. Well, it's easy to lose cautious. a lot really quickly with that first mindset because if you're just Correct. looking at how much you're going to win every time you bet, mm-hmm. you're not really considering the loss. But if you, for example, on Friday night go, all right, this is what I was going to do this weekend. And if none of these bets win, I'm going to lose $250, which is a quarter of my weekly wage. Yeah. So is this a good idea? Probably not. And if you think about betting that way before you just... You know, I'm putting a fifty dollars multi on tonight. Safe as three legs, same game. It's four to one. You know, I'll have two hundred bucks to play with this weekend after it wins. Like, yeah. if you're thinking like that, that that's instantly that's that should be alarming to you. That's hope, a great maybe point. if you think yeah. about or see this, like if you if that's actually how you think, which is how you punters think, that. you need to look at it the other way and go, all right, am I going to be okay if I don't have this fifty bucks? And then if you lose that fifty bucks and you go to put another one on tomorrow night, all right, am I going to be okay now if I'm down a hundred bucks? As opposed to thinking. I'll go safer legs now and I'll turn my 50 into 150. I'll get my yeah. 50 back from last night and get another 50. Like if you thinking, if you are thinking like that and find yourself thinking like that, that's yeah, yeah. why you'll continue to lose, unfortunately. Yeah. I reckon what a lot of people do, um, I definitely reckon I was guilty of doing it too, is you get a multi, you pick a couple of selections you like and it might come to say 250 or something mm. like that. And then you like, add, add a few more. Well, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want just 250. So you'll literally then go and look for extra value. You'll look for extra eggs, mm. look, legs, sorry, to try and get it up to $4 or $5. Yeah. Or people want to get to double digits. They want to get yeah. to $10. Or people have 50 on it. So they want a grand return. So then they get to $20. So they'll just continuously look. And then all of a sudden those dollar ten legs, yeah, they actually start to add a little bit of extra value when you're yeah, going when you're from 10 to yeah. $12 to 14 to 18 Yeah. But then you're literally just adding an extra leg every single time that, mind you, is already under in the expected value. You're yeah. already getting less on what you should on those legs to begin with. Yeah. It's just a recipe for disaster. Well, we did a podcast earlier this year, Tom, where we spoke about the people doing like a lot of dollar ten legs and then yeah. putting a lot of money on them, <clears throat> the whole multi. Yeah. But the question you can ask is, would you put... Let's say they put a grand on a multi paying. I don't yeah, know, ten legs. They're all like a dollar ten. It's literally four. Yeah, well, there's some, just, whatever, we don't want to get into the maths. But yeah, yeah. would you put a grand on every single one of those legs mm. to make a hundred dollars? And no, no you and they'd all say no. So yeah. why the fuck are you putting it on a multi? You need everyone to win. It's the same yeah. thing. But that's literally just because people <laughs> either don't understand the multi or they don't understand that just it's just up. rolling your bet over and over. If you're gonna do that, like if you're somebody that's listening to this, these guys are dickheads. Of course, I would do that. You're still better off. You may as well do like your whole stake on the first leg. And if that wins, you, you may as well take some of that back before Correct. you bet again. Because Don't. if you keep rolling your whole stake, you need to understand that you have to be, you have to have a 100% uh, yeah. strike rate as a punter. No one, no one And has nobody in the whole world, 70. nobody professionally goes as a 100% punter. So every time you do a multi, Lose. you have to be a 100% punter. Literally. And that's why you're never going to win. That's why I we should win. literally encourage people to do that. If you're listening and you do multis, this is where same game multis don't allow you to do it, and that's probably yes. the beauty of same game multis for the bookies is that you can't separate your bets because it all has to be done before the game, obviously. But if you're picking multis where you're picking, even if you're doing same game multis in a multi, put a same game. If if you're putting fifty bucks on four same game multis in one giant multi, put fifty bucks on the first same game multi. If it wins, then put all of your returns. See if you have the balls to put all of your returns on your second same game multi because you probably won't, to be honest. And then, but yeah, and then you, but that's but good. You walk away with profit. Plus, yes. I was going to say, plus you've actually in that situation you've actually profited, right? So yeah. if you've hit a winner, so you've made money. So now you now have an opportunity, even if you have that mindset where you know, oh, it doesn't matter. It's only yeah. profit unless it's in my account. You're in that position now where you've made the money. Yeah. So then you have to make another decision, and that's what the multi doesn't allow you to do. Because you get through the first leg, you're like, sick, I'm a quarter of the way there. Whereas, as you said, if that money's sitting in their account, they're not going to go, oh, like that 50's turning into 250. Yeah. I'm not going to have 250 on this next one. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I might have 50, but at least, you know, we've well, that, changed that's, that that's mindset correct. because money the management. next one's going to lose. Yeah. Or the one after that's going to yeah. lose. Yeah. Or the last one will lose. And instead of losing the 250 that you made, you might have just lost the next 50 that you bet on. The, the problem with, yeah. with this as well, which this is called the... I think it's the aversion to loss or 
the one where you basically have, let's say you've hit three same, no, you've hit two same game multis, the third one loses, but you've got four legs in that whole multi. Like you said, you've got four same game multis yep. in one multi, right? Two of them win, the third one loses. The next game's still tomorrow. Yeah. You're going to go do that same one. Yeah, again. you'll bet it. Because you think, oh, it I've been won. so unlucky with this one. It would have won. Guarantee if I don't bet on this next one, it'll Correct. win. And then you'll bet on it. So exactly, a massive disclaim. We've just said do this or do that, yeah. place a multi. Obviously, we, we would rather these no one do prefer- anything. Yeah. These are preferred yeah. options to the huge. A hypothetical, yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. To um, the huge multi every week. Exactly. And you're going to lose less doing that because you're going to not put that fucking but it's yeah it's on. just more of a hypothetical situation so that somebody sitting there that goes here i do put a multi on for the whole round every yes. afl oh fuck like these guys yeah maybe they're talking some sense because i wouldn't actually put the whole amount on the next bet and then yeah. the whole amount on the next well, one yeah and then got, let's go into same gamers and and same races that the the mats to create those bets are different they're created by the bookie so they're obviously ripping you off as we know now do we want to explain like I think you're probably best to explain this in terms of like the odds and the possibilities of things and like basically putting in, you're no longer getting the multiplied odds. It's it's what the bookie gives you. So you might put in a $2 selection, right? And then another $2 selection in the same market. It's not paying four. It might be paying three or 350, yeah. right? And they've done that because of their calculators, whatever system they've got going on to create it. Every bookie is different the way they do it. Um, but you're always going to get ripped off yeah. um, through well, that process. Literally, like the the obvious response to that is, well, the legs are you know conditional on, e- on yeah, each other, so, so that's cor- going to correlate, they correlate to each other. So if you know if yeah. you go Carlton to win in Crips to kick in two goals, you're not going to get Double. the exact odds yes. multiplied multiple. by each other because they're you know they obviously one leads to the other sort of Correct. thing. But having said that, then it's completely shadowed. <laughs> You know, like that calculation that yes. the bookies are offering you, you have no idea. Whereas if you're multiing two games of footy, you're going to get the exact multiplication Correct. of those odds. And yes. you know exactly what odds you're getting. Again, there's yeah. an explanation, a mathematical explanation as to why you're getting those odds. With same game multi, if you go Crips two goals into Carlton winning, the bookies are just going to spit some number at Ooh. you and you're just going to accept it. And it's completely who knows. You have no idea yeah. what their real calculation would be. And how much they're and actually taking an edge of off you, you. You can differ like three, four dollars on one more, five, yeah. ten dollars on different bookies, and that's alarming because one bookie might be ripping you off by fucking five dollars. That's a lot. Yeah. And if you're gonna win a bet, right, you want to actually get paid for what you should because 100%. everyone's losing just about. And when they do win, which is something I want to talk about in a second, because people watching this are like, Oh, you can't win multis. I've seen my mate win this, I've seen this guy win that, I've seen that post there. Of course you have, because People need to have that hope to actually keep betting. But when we say, like to clarify, when we say people don't win, we're not saying that the bets don't win. We're saying that if you bet in that manner for the entire time that you bet, if you bet for 50 years of your life and you always bet like that, you're not going to be in profit in 50 years. Yes, of course, your mate can hit a multi on the weekend. No, none of us are denying that. Your mate might hit two multis in two weekends. Like that, that's fine. Like, you know, that can happen. But if they kept betting like that for the entire time they kept betting, they will not be in profit at the end. And that's not us guessing that's not us generalizing that's a fact that's how the bookies make profit because the odds are rigged in their favor and, luck. and the more you turn over through the bookies the more that you bet through the bookies the more likely you are to lose that's yeah. literally how it's set up so yes you can win yes you can make money some weekends yes you can make money some months maybe or you can hit an enormous multi and win 100k right but what that person needs to know is that they are the full-blown outlier and when quit. you see those huge wins i can guarantee you almost like with a hundred percent certainty that they, they have bet so many other bets before that have you lost. Only, yeah, that's a the problem. They only see the winning bet. Correct. And it's like there's a guy on Twitter that has won a massive multi, and he's got a massive following now. And good luck to him, right? He got lucky, he won a multi. But we've been tracking and and following, and obviously he's been doing this for a while, probably doing it his whole life. And in if you're betting in that manner, as you said, it's not a matter of if. You're gonna lose. It's it's when it's just and when and how long, much. It's how long that yeah. enables you. Some person might take ten years to get to that loss. Some type person might take fucking five days because they all their losses come first. That guy has probably or an individual who wins a big bet probably saves them for longer and actually makes them bet more in the process and probably quickens that process to back to losing in the, in the I end. I think the frustrating part about what we're talking about as well is that like, you know, we're talking about edge, right? The bookies have, you know, the bookies are going to make money off you guaranteed. Like they know it's guaranteed because of the way they set the odds. And everybody seems to understand the roulette analogy, right? Everybody seems to understand that 
the house always wins on roulette because they have the green the green zeros, right? So you can't just go to the casino and keep betting on black and eventually double your money, right? Yeah. Your initial stake. Because there are double zeros there. Yeah, well, that, that means it's rigged for yes. them to win. That's why they're there. And people seem to understand that. They go, yeah, yeah, I get that. It's rigged. There's those double zeros. But then when you talk about it from a bookie perspective, they don't understand that it's rigged. And the easiest way for you to work out if it's rigged is go to the next AFL game. Yeah. Look at the two line. teams. Oh, even the line. The, the line's lines. a great one. Look at the line. You know, there's only two outcomes. It's either like one Carlton clear the yeah. line or St. Kilda clear the line, right? But if you bet the same amount on both of those lines, you're going to lose money. Yeah. And that money that you're going to lose is what the bookie makes per bet. And that's yeah. how you work out how much of an edge the bookie has over you. And yeah. that's why you always lose in the long term because whatever bet you've put on this side of the line, somebody else has put on this side of the line. Yeah. Yes, you're going to win, but they've lost their whole stake. And they've only paid you out 90% of that person's stake. And that's mm. how they always make money. Yeah. Same as, literally the same as the casino. Like, a lot of people, I think, do understand that the bookies are rigged. You know, like, it, it's, there is also a large portion of people that don't. Um, and they definitely, you know, pick just, a man stupid. Hey. Dunning Kruger effect. They're not, yeah. they're yet to work it out, but yeah. they eventually do. But, like, but, like, going back to the roulette analogy, there's still a shit ton of people that will go and play red and black. Like, yeah. And so there's, there's two issues here. There's one that it is definitely rigged. Um, and then it's two that it's rigged. People know it, but they're still yeah. willing to go and play the game. Generally, some people play it for fun, um, but that's definitely the minority. The majority are genuinely going there to think that they are going to be that one person. Because... When it's all said and done, someone does win on a multi. Someone, yeah, somewhat, yeah we, but we someone know. has to win Tats Lotto, man. Exactly right. So but fucking, do you follow them? No, no, no. Hang on, hang on. Let me finish. <laughs> I, ob- yeah, like, obviously, you know, I don't. But like, it's like people think they're going to be that one in a million. Yes. People think they're going to be that one in a billion. But when it all comes down, it all comes down to probability. Would you rather be in the chances of being in that 0.001% of people or are you more likely going to be in that 99.99% of people by playing this game? Mm. And yeah, sure enough, someone is going to be that one in 100,000 or one in a million. But like long term, you, you, the odds are against you and mm. you, it, it's eventually going to catch up. So what, are you saying they, they know that and they just choose to lose and they say, oh yeah, I'll... People, well, no, 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 no. They know that, but they genuinely think they're going to be that so one in a million think, person. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And that, that's, because someone has to do it. That's Literally the, yeah. your response, even though your response is a piss take. Yeah. Someone has to win Tats Lotto. Yeah, yeah, so everyone's yeah. like, oh, I'm pretty special. Everyone fucking thinks they're great. So yeah. why, why can't they be that person? Yeah, and I think that comes back to when people do win them, you hear about it. And no yeah. one's fucking... Glorify Tell losses. that guy on Twitter to post all his losing bets. To be fair... To, to Or anyone else who's doing this. He, he, he actually has said in that video he did, he, he actually says, like, there's a lot of losing bets in here. There's a lot of losing yeah, bets. And he actually which is said, a fair credit to him. Yeah, he actually said... If you're betting, you're going to lose in the long term. And I didn't really understand. Oh, he said that. that. He a quote on his video. And I'm like, hang on, what? Like, you're just claiming that you're winning, but you just said that you're going to lose. No, like, but I didn't want to take it out of context. No, no, I wasn't it's sure. not out of context because he doesn't, like, the, the, the thing that he does well is that he doesn't sit there and say, oh my God. He's like, yes. this is what I've done. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah. as he said, I'm lucky enough to have hit this huge multi. And when we comment on these things, we're not attacking this guy. No. Like, this guy, he's on Twitter. He can post whatever the fuck he wants. Yes. And good luck to him. But it's when people go, like, yeah. we're like, look, you know, there should be some money management here. How much should you put? How much should you put on this? Like, you know, how, how, where are the results? Like, why, why, why are you betting on this? Why are you copying this guy? Yes. If you don't know, A, if he's profitable, B, how much you should be putting on this bet. Some people don't even know how to put the fucking type of bet that he's betting yeah. on. <laughs> that guy the last comments, week. No, nah, but so, like, <laughs> one I know bet, we're laughing. One la- out of seven. I know, in yeah. The multi I know we're like- laughing, but like, imagine going on Twitter and seeing something that you have no idea how to do yeah. and then going, oh, I'm just going to, like there's 20 people that comment on this. This this must be a but, good thing. And then you're going to put your hard-earned cash on a bet. You don't even know how to place. Yes, that, that's the problem though. The human mind only sees the winnings and the potential winnings and they don't care that, well, they don't know. It's Those people don't know at all. Like they're in the bracket where they just don't know. Yep. They don't understand. Yep. But then there's the people as well who probably do understand yet they think that this guy has some kind of method that he's won that bet, right? That's full on luck. He's hit a gold mine out of fucking it's, it's probably hum- hundreds of thousands of bets. It's yeah. human nature. If you go to like, I'm going a little bit off topic, but Tats Lotto, right? Yeah. If oh, I know if, if you're an agency, if yeah. you're the agency that sells a you know yeah, group one Tats Lotto, they boobs. people are going to that shop. People drive across town to go. Well, to you that had shop. the winner last week, and yeah. the it's, gam- 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 it's like yeah. fucking. Oh, I'll go there. 
Yeah. But the only thing, like going back to the more relevant topic about someone posting their multis on Twitter, right? The only problem that I have is that even if he says, or they're saying, you know, I don't win many bets, you're going to lose in the long term. If on his Twitter, instead of a $600,000 win collect is pinned on his Twitter, if he pinned his bet statement every month mm. and everybody could see that before they follow his tips, we're all adults, we're just betting, you know, whatever we can afford to lose. That's fine. I don't care if you do that. You, you're going to lose, but I don't care. But if you went onto his page and it set up the top super, super multi losses or whatever, yeah. and then it said, I, since I've started betting, I'm down 20 grand in my whole life. Yeah. How many people would follow the bet? No. Yeah. Well, none. Great. Probably point. less, way less. And on all those Facebook groups, imagine every time someone posted their multi win yeah. up the top right hand corner and had their loss. lifetime profit and loss. And they're down 30k. No one would even look at the multi. They nah. just scroll past it. Yeah, and that's, that's the, problem. the part that pisses me off a well, lot. This is what brings us now. We'll talk about. Are we done talking about multis, or yeah, we want to move on yeah. to my blood's boiling? <laughs> Mate, I, it's that's just, a great point, yeah. though. It genuinely is. I, I, I just want to add okay. one thing to it. Is even people themselves individually, they wouldn't even realize they're down. If if it had their yes. own profit loss, if it even if they had their own individual profit loss that said they were down 20 grand, they'd even reconsider their own gambling. But it's like over they would. over a five year period, that would be what sixty months. They're down, you know, three hundred and thirty three dollars a month. It's it's hardly yeah. noticeable. It's, it's noticeable, but like in the scheme of things, it's hardly yeah, noticeable. It's easy to see to how it. that could accumulate. Yeah. But if you again, if you sat there and said in five years yeah. you're going to put twenty k yeah. in your sports bet account, nobody's going to sit there and go, yeah, but it's fun. Like that's yeah. all right. Well, yeah. What else are you going to spend twenty grand on for fun? That's two Europe trips, mate. Yeah. 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 Probably yeah more if you're on a budget. But yeah. <laughs> if you're in the 40 bed dorms <laughs> nah, I wouldn't do that anymore but I did it when I was younger but the, the comment actually from a subscriber who just signed up not to pump her own horns but you've just mentioned about the not knowing how much you lose this guy said I'm two weeks in I'm 24 uh, uh, sorry I'm two weeks in I'm 24 or so units up and I fucking enjoy the day and the banner of following the system I never worried about how much I was punting previously but I joined the system as a side hustle stopped betting recreationally uh, and last night he did a mini audit and realized over the last six months on average, he's down $150 a week on fucking same game multis and random punts. Sure, I get the occasional jackpot, but few and far between. My point is the 24 units I'm up in a fortnight, you can add 10 units a week that I'd been down lately to that. And it's actually a 44 unit turnaround for me. So a lot of people, which is like 150 to down to 150 down to now 200, yeah. 300 up a week. And he's fucking stoked. He said, and, this is not to pump our horns, but we're talking about now the losing and how to stop that. And we're going to talk about what bookies have now introduced um, into, I think it's regulation, um, about the, yeah. the, their monthly I just want to statements. In for one sec, yeah, because go. we did have, like, last podcast, we read out a couple of um, comments or DMs and people didn't believe that they're real. I know that there's some probably some trolls, but I just thought like on the camera, we can blur out oh, his we'll name, but you can see the DM there. Um, just sent it we'll to put it on the screen, there. but yeah. we'll, we'll, if you think we're going to make this shit up, we've got like, fucking, yeah. yeah. No, but I just thought like, we yeah, have that to reading that is, reading that is elite and I feel like we're connecting with more and more people yeah. that are, that is good. Even though. if you're not fucking subscribed, we, we get people like unsubscribing when they unsubscribe. We always tell them, we don't just say, fuck you, see you later, you're not paying us. It's like, bro, just stay involved. Make sure you understand that you, you have no edge over the bookies. You're not going to win doing this or betting blindly, doing get, get blindly, same game multis, all this. Our free content's there for anyone. All right, so the camera just fucking shit itself. So we're going to resume from where I was talking before. I was saying, obviously, um, whether you're a subscriber or not, if you're listening to this podcast and you've just listened to the last 30 minutes about multis and, and edge and, and money management and stuff like that, and even if you never, ever subscribe to our service, we hope that obviously you can listen to this and be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be a smarter punter from listening to this. And this, the same goes with any of our content out there. It's all designed to, to help punters be smarter. If you can't, then go away and, and follow a system that wins um, or you don't want to stop punting at all. Obviously, that's the best option. Second to a system um, for an addict, stop punting is better. But if you watch this and you're like, okay, I've learned that and I'm now I'm going to apply this to my betting and that's going to help you, then that's a win. So I think what we'll talk about now is what the bookies have introduced with the um, government thing. I don't know the official law of what's done. But well, the bookies haven't introduced it. It's been, they've had their hand forced. forced. Yeah. So essentially what's happening from August is that the bookies have to send out, they have to send you a monthly statement every yeah. month. Every month that you place a bet with them, Active, you have to yeah. get a monthly statement. So essentially now every punter, 
instead of getting all their, and they probably still get them, all their deposit off of emails, all their, these are the specials for the weekend, blah, blah, blah. At the end of every month, they're going to get an email from Sportsbet, from Tab, from Bet365, telling them their profit and loss and their position for the month. And yeah. That's gonna that's gonna be some pretty ugly reading, I think, for for people that probably, as we said, some people don't really know how much they lose. Yeah. People don't track their bets. People have no understanding of how much they lose over a year. And I think I think the bookies will not think the bookies are shattered that this legislation's come in because it is it won't wake everybody up, but there are going to be people that read yeah. their statement and go, oh fuck. I didn't know it was that bad. Mm. Or I thought I hit a couple of multis this month. Like, like I didn't still know down. I was still down. Two grand. All this money. Or literally just seeing deposits. Yeah. Two grand. Withdrawals. 500. Because you hit a $500 return multi. And you think that you're up. But you've put in that much over the month. Like, yeah. The bookies are... The bookies They'll didn't want it. that. They did yeah. not want that. But... Yeah, that's one step towards responsible gambling. We're, we're, like, we're stoked to see that yeah. come in. Like, that, that's an elite step in the right direction for us as a country for sure but yeah it'll be interesting to see that now and you know we get a lot of hate or shit on tiktok or whatever and like it'll be interesting now it shows show us your monthly statements have Legit, you looked through we've your been asking sta- for yeah, people for that them? like yeah all these geniuses telling us you can't win or they're making heaps of money or they know how to do it time to put like show us time to put your money where your mouth is well yeah show us it's, your bank statement. it's not about proving we already knew it but maybe for them now they know it too well it would be more of exactly. it's gonna be a, yeah it's gonna reality be a rude check. shock definitely a reality check for yep. a lot of punters and I think it will it will definitely affect turnover for bookies yeah which is a good thing for, for what we're trying to do yeah. but yeah the bookies are gonna hate it I'm pretty interested to see how the bookies try and sugarcoat it they'll do something oh, they'll, probably they'll, be they'll do something with an offer or the specials yeah. or yeah, I'm not sure around the legislation yeah. around what can be in that email, but there's going to be some way for them to fucking spin it for sure. There, which well, is I'm just thinking be maybe they'll yeah. keep an eye out on and see. Yeah, what would you do if, if someone's won? You could probably offer them an extra fucking boost or an extra yeah. bonus multi or something. Potentially give them five percent in bonus bets of their losses or something. Yeah, well, but I think they're really you've, you've had a tough month, you know, yeah. <laughs> something, that, you know, don't... Surely they honestly, can't do that, but they probably a, could. Oh, they'll, there's something. Because they'll be like, okay, you have to send this out, but there may not be a legislation. We're speculating here, obviously. Yeah. It's like with the sign-up offers. You, you can't offer an incentive for a sign-up, but you can offer it after they've signed up. It's yeah. the same thing. And but, for their birthday. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fuck it up. Shout out to Palmerbet. <laughs> <laughs> Long Saturday. But, Did you take that? Yeah, of course. Turn it over? Yeah, of course. <laughs> good, good turnover percentage. Yeah. Unfortunately, a couple of the bonuses won, but that's all right. What are you going to do? <laughs> but what can you do? No, but the reality <laughs> is, like, back, back on <laughs> topic, that that's going to be great for punters that... Because there are some people, right? Like, no, no, come on, I'm serious now. There are some people that see our content and then they think, oh, I actually am smarter than the average person. Maybe I should listen to what these guys say. Maybe I should have a look at my statements. Maybe I should check my betting or do, you know, a reconciliation of my accounts. So there will be people now that get that statement and see it and get a really rude shock and then pull back their betting or yeah. change the way yeah. that they think about betting or they're a lot more aware of what they're putting into account. So I'm, I, I it think it may be all great... it takes for some people to oh, realize. Oh, definitely. It'll definitely, oh, that's shit. why I'm saying I think turnover will definitely be reduced. That's massive. Purely because yeah. people are going to get that rude reality shock. It's like when you asked a few, I think on like the first podcast, you're like, imagine if everybody had their life, their life balance. Or maybe it wasn't. It was no, like it was the private, guy we just spoke to. Private chat, yeah. The family man guy. With yeah, Peter. Yeah. And he yeah. was like, he's like, yeah, imagine if every time you logged into your sports bet, it literally told you your lifetime profit and loss or if you're sitting on the pokies mm. your lifetime yeah, profit yeah, and loss yeah. like of course people wouldn't bet as much yeah but, but I, don't, I, I don't think people want to know people don't want to but no, at least be, loads of people won't open that email yeah loads of people will be afraid, afraid. hopefully it doesn't, doesn't go to their junk, junk. Yeah. yeah that's junk I was going to say that could be one thing where they can try and send it so it looks spammy enough that people don't open it well if you yeah. do certain things with emails which we've kind of worked out with anytime we've like uh, our subscribers when they sign up it yeah, goes to their junk we need to sort that out but Obviously, I wonder if that's something that, that they'll do. You can manipulate it, so who knows? I mean, they'll they'll definitely try to do something, and I'm excited to a see the punters' reaction and b as well, we said, we know that it. the bookies will do something different. Mm-hmm. Did you say it's not until August they have to do it? August is when it's like when yeah. they leave. But they already started. Do I know. I, I think. Well, PointsBet already did it. That PointsBet did an annual one. I'm pretty sure. I saw. I saw not yeah. long ago. They I know Betfair do it. For like yeah, yeah, a Betfair, week, Betfair, okay. but it's in a different format. It's more like Bet three six five. You can look in your account 
Yeah, it's three, yeah, that's a change, which is elite. Yeah. I don't know if that's a responsible gambling law or if Bet365 Bet are just trying to get on the front foot. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That, we've already made a video about that. Like yeah. if you have a Bet365 account and you're not sure how you've been going betting, you can literally see your last 12 months, your last three months, your last month. So have a look in it. Uh, yeah. we, we tell everybody, this is probably a good segue from that topic. You know, we, we've spoken about recently, you know, especially to new subscribers, for example, but anyone in general, like tracking your bets. Mm. Yeah. Like it, it, this this monthly statement thing is going to help you do that. But if you're punting and you're doing it, and lots of people are trying to make money, if you're punting and doing it for profit, you have to be tracking, tracking your bets. Yes. You have to be keeping a record of where you're at, what are you making money on, what aren't you making money yeah. on. You don't have to track your... It's a bit tedious to track every single bet, especially if you're betting a lot. Well, but track your deposits and withdrawals. say deposits and withdrawals. Minimum, That's fucking easy. Minimum yeah. Get your bank statement. It, easy it, CBA does it for you. Entertainment yeah, yeah. spending for this month, up 20%. It'll tell you on your app. So... yeah. I mean, but anybody that like is looking for tips and tricks, right? There are people that listen to us and think we're clowns, and they're never going to subscribe. But they might cares? think, "Oh, this is some good general advice." If you are betting and you want to make a profit or you want to stop yeah. losing as much, just track them. You can hate us, but delete like yeah, it just doesn't change them. anything to do with maths. It doesn't change edge. It doesn't change book. He's always going to win. Literally, no. we, we're just the messengers. Don't don't stress about who's delivering. But the just message. yeah, just track your bets for a month, two months. Have a look yeah. at it and see how you go. Or check every statement. If you've got a few yeah. betting accounts, check them all. And then just see if that makes you change the way that you think about yeah. your next couple bets or the way that you punt every weekend. Yeah, Maybe yeah. put your phone away when you've had 10 beers. Or yeah. well, you never know. You, you might find something pleasant. Like you might find that you're, you're good at it's hitting... It's changed or... or you, no, you, you're good at hitting particular types of bets. You might find something that you like. You, yeah. you, know, you don't even realize you're good at. But if all of a sudden this is where you need to be get tedious... Like get tedious and you know, yeah, I've lost five hundred on the horses. I've lost three hundred on the NRL, yeah. but I'm even or you know, I lost AFL, I'm pretty good. Yeah, oh, I lost like, nine hundred on same gamers, but I'm even on singles. Yeah, yeah. Um, delete same. Maybe game I shouldn't be betting on same game multis. Yeah. Plus, plus fucking nine hundred for the month or whatever. Um, brings us. Uh, we forgot to include this in the last bit. I think we wanted to talk about some tricks and stuff that bookies yeah. are using. You wanted to talk. Well, about... we're sort of leading into it there about yeah. how are they going to sort of disguise their. Well, this their would be emails. yeah. These things would be the combat to to the. Yeah. You know, people are going to start seeing how much they're going to lose. How can yeah. we get them to bet more? And so, yeah, maybe you can dive yeah. into this one, Steve. But yeah, so one thing that I find I actually find it really enjoyable to sort of see how the bookies go about you know advertising and marketing and obviously you've done a couple of videos talking about tips and tricks or you know sort of subliminal messages sports bet try to send people through their advertising you had that video where sports bet basically embarrassed a punter for buying tips um, obviously the reason being is that you know sports bet don't want people buying tips because they know that tips are going to offer structure um, and a very systematic approach to their gambling and ultimately that's going to remove emotion and that's going to mean that people lose less and gamble less and, and, and bet in a more sensible manner, I suppose. So that's one sort of um, thing. And that's definitely in sort of the more advertising marketing side of things. But sports bet are definitely at the forefront of um, leading sort of leading the charge for advertising. Oh, they're the best. And, yeah, they're unbelievable. Um, their marketing team and the things they come up with is just yeah, fascinating. I'd love to sit in their, in their meetings. Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> that'd, be one, that'd be one of their highest expenditures, marketing. They would be pumping try, try and get a mole in mo- there. money into that. <laughs> I mean, it's not rocket science what they're doing. Yeah. Everyone knows what they're doing, but yeah. Keep but going. look at their most recent innovation. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, it's probably uh, it's a couple of months recent now. Yeah. Um, we should have talked to the last podcast, but we didn't. But the um the same game multi live tracker it's just honestly the, the best part about it is it's actually really useful as mm-hmm. well um and so like annoyingly like annoying mm. like no call it's perfect it's spade. convenient it is convenient as for everyone like for anyone who's placed the same game multi you got disposals whatever you're going oh i've got this leg and then you flip yeah. over the afl app you check the stats then you flip back to your yeah, multi yeah. so it is check. actually very very yeah convenient. you write them in everyone writes them in their notes it's or... got a tick there if it's one already yeah. it doesn't have to go it's literally check it it's off. got visuals green it's, tick yeah green ticks <laughs> it's it's and but ultimately the, the brilliance of it is how effective it is and how valuable it is to the consumer. But ultimately, it gets people staying on their app longer. Correct. Yeah. And eventually, you're going to get sidetracked by looking, going on, checking your same game multi results, and then you're going to go, oh, actually, yeah, I might just quarter, check what else is going on. You have a look at quarter time. Oh, the next game's in you know, yeah. 40 minutes. Or yeah, it's on a Saturday. They're halfway through the 110 game. Oh, the next race is Caulfield. Oh, I'll just have a look. You know, my multi's, my multi's tracking good. well. Yeah, yeah, like I've already got a couple of green ticks. So yeah. I mm. may as well head to Caulfield and film a bank or whatever. Like it's, yeah, it is so, so clever. It's brilliant. It is honestly brilliant. And this, th- there's, there's plenty of um, examples of this. Um, 
And what I don't think people realize, people, one of the comments we get from people when we highlight these things is people like, oh, it's not that deep, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yes, so those, those people are yeah. the ones that will either lose and haven't lost enough yet to realize it's a problem yeah. or they just want to fucking throw out hate on for random yeah. reasons. Yeah. Yeah. There's half a chance they probably don't even bet and they're just like... They just yeah. want to take the piss, which is fine. Keep doing it, do whatever you want. But yeah. it is deep and it's fucking smart and they'll keep doing it and they'll keep making ways in t- until they can get smarter and smarter and smarter without you even knowing it. Yeah, anything and to keep you on the up longer. Literally, bet yeah. with mates was the best fucking thing because Genius. it's so convenient. Everyone's doing fucking uh, punters club. Now Brilliant. it's conveniently done for them. They're going to start betting more. You're going to start involving your mates, more of a social aspect. Everything leads to losing more. To be literally. fair, I've seen I've seen um the bet with mates have, I've seen some people um, exploiting that and I've been yeah. loving seeing that. I've seen guys on Twitter that are like, oh, you know, I'm banned with all my promos on sports bet, but I open up a bet yeah. with mates with one mate and They'll I get all the promos now. again. <laughs> they get, no, they get all the promos again. Yeah, so I've they've been doing it like do they have like six different punters clubs with just one mate and they have six sports bet accounts with promos on them. Yeah. It gets shut down very quickly, oh, yeah, but yeah. like, yeah, right. it was just so funny to see yeah. people like, and I'm, I don't care. Oh, like, Jay-Z. I love, Jay-Z I love Z watching people. Yeah, I love watching people exploit that. Like, <laughs> yeah. fuck them, honestly. <laughs> fuck them all. Like, yeah. if they're going to be doing legit. that, so I was there. Yeah, some guy thought he was a genius on Twitter. I was reading his thread. He was literally explaining how to do it, but yeah. it, it, it gets get shut, shut down, down pretty very, quick. very quickly. So he was making individual, like, extra accounts. So he was having like six of his own. Well, he was like, so say my sports bets banned, so then I'll make a punting group with me and you. Oh. And then that group has promos. Yeah, and then I'll yeah, make yeah, a punting yeah. group with me and JP. And then that group has promos. Yeah. yeah, okay. And he had like five, he was like a screenshot like of the five punting, <laughs> all the, and they all had promos. So he I could mean, have like, he could follow the system, $250 a year. Yeah, right. With, with, <laughs> with obviously this stuff, like we'd never recommend that because obviously no. it goes of against all not. sustainability. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but obviously... Good luck to anyone who's decided to do that and you're going to lose your account nah, eventually. They, yeah, but I'm pretty sure they've... they've they would last a week, max. Yeah, max. Um, yeah. But it was just funny to see people like, you know, fuck these guys. They're, they're using this to get us to punt more. I'm going to find a way to use it against them. I yeah. like, I like yeah. how yeah. people do things. Well, like that's what we've fucking lived off for yeah. seven years yeah. from before we started this. But do but we like want to talk about the other one? Um, the yeah, yeah. It goes back into multis in terms of yeah. the percentage increase. We won't name the bookie who does it. But essentially, you're getting a, an increased percentage with the more legs you add. So I think it went 5% for double, so two legs, uh, 7.5% for a triple. It went up by 2.5% until the fifth or sixth leg, and then it started increasing by 5%. So you're going to get a, a percentage boost based off the number of legs. So for example, you add seven legs, you're up to like, I think it was 25% boost. So if you place a, it's a $10 multi in terms of the odds, it would be what, 12 and a half. So camera's cut off again. We're talking about if you had a $10 odds multi and you've got that 25% boost, that would then take it to $12.50 in odds, right? Now, this is what obviously a certain bookie is doing. Um, I don't know if someone else wanted to butt in and and say why they're doing that in terms of the more legs you add. I think if you just have to look at it logically, right? Obviously, the bookies are there to make money, okay? So you have to think about it. Not even like, let's not even talk about edge, bookies, whatever. If somebody's giving you... 25% 25% discount or 25% extra or buy one, get one free, whatever it is that they're doing that because they're enticing you to buy this thing or to do this thing in a certain way. And the reason they're doing that is because it's extremely beneficial for them. So the reason you're getting more and more additional percentage on every single leg you add is because the bookie knows and the maths say that every time you add another leg, you are less and less likely to win yeah. the bet. So they're happy to say, cool, you've got a six leg multi. Yeah, yeah. Great. We'll give you an extra $2.50 odds. We'll give you that 25% extra. Because even though we're giving you 25%, that's still not enough to justify putting six legs in. And we still have a huge advantage over you. Yeah. If you go up to like 15 legs, I'm pretty sure they double the odds. Mm. They give you like 100% extra. It's crazy. Yeah. And that's because they know. It, it goes up matter. by 5% per leg. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, leg. So if you do a 20 leg multi and you get instead of 10 to 1 odds, they give you 20 to 1 odds. That's because they know if you've got 20 legs in a multi, it doesn't matter the odds of the multi. They have a massive advantage over you. So they're encouraging you to do that. So just think about that the next time, you know, we've spoken about some of their tips, I mean, some of their tricks, some of their methods to get you to punt more. If you think about a promotion or you see something that's too good to be true, we've spoken about the points bet ones before as well. If something sounds too good to be true or it seems like massive value or you're getting something out of it, think again, think logically, you're not. And they're just doing that because they want you to keep yeah. doing multis because in the long term you will lose i would i wouldn't say you know it's bl- like outright um a scam or not it's, it's no, an it's outright not a scam. yeah yeah but like 
if something's too good to be true, definitely just think about it and really just like constructively think about it before making your next decision. Yeah. Yeah, look yeah. look from not, another angle. Why yeah, would someone yeah. be doing why this? Doing that? That's how I think with anything. Like mm. I don't just look at it from one side. For example, any decision you make, you should think of it from, okay, another side or ask someone else or whatever. Obviously, mm. you're not going to fucking ask someone else about this. But yeah, just stop and think for a second and you'll probably work it out pretty yeah. quickly. Like there will be geniuses watching that right now going, I have an edge in the way that I select things. They might actually have an edge. And they'll, be, and they'll say, if I do have an edge in six leg multis, hypothetically, then I'm getting a bigger edge with the yep. 25%. And that individual person may be, yeah. but the average Joe that's putting on a multi that has no idea that You're puts not that six person, man. Just, negative yeah. EV <laughs> bets, yeah, six negative EV bets in a row together and thinks, oh, now I've got that extra 25% elite Mm. wrong and that's I mean, why they're doing it i mean it's no different to basically the crux of our system you know the horse you know the money back option for horse comes second or third that you know that if you play that right which obviously Correct. is you know what we're built off you have an edge and you can play it right and play it in your favor and you're going to win long well, that's term, a pure obviously. mathematical edge yeah. for all these things they're pure mathematical like exactly. it's, they're there for everyone so sure they're there for everyone so, so use every, them. Everyone, use it. everyone everyone can do them but you have to use they them know properly. that most people much like the multi if people are going to actually somehow make it beneficial to get that extra 25% on their six leg multi they're probably going to be in that 0.5% yeah. bookie will say good luck to you bookie it's will fine. say yeah but 99.5% yeah. of people much like 99.5% of people get the promos that we use as well but they're still losing anyway because yeah, they get because sucked in and then they still make they, mistakes they punt anyway. the promo and they, yeah. they lose it and I think the bookies take back it used to be about 12 bucks per like 100 or so 12.5% or 12% per bonus I think it may bit higher now what they valued it at yeah so they, yeah. they value like if we give you, you a bonus or a hundred thousand punters a hundred thousand of bonus yeah, they lose 12 and a half k yeah across that hundred thousand which is nothing and obviously the person if everybody knew what to do they should be losing 65 percent of that like everybody yeah, should, correct you should be plus the taxes and correct. whatever yeah, that they, they, yeah, they should have probably to be down after the taxes but that's one and a half percent that they're losing a lot of that no they don't the give them away because they're fucking gonna lose they're giving them away because they know they can still win yeah, even correct. if it's Fucking yeah. 12%. But I, I, think, I think just to clarify that point, we, you brush over that very quickly, just so everyone sort of understands what you're saying there. If yeah. On average, if the bookies give out $100 in bonus bets, they will expect to lose. Because some people, are, like everyone, everyone has to gamble it at some point, whether you're turning it over, whether you're gambling it, whether you're doing whatever way you're doing it. Some people are going to win. Some bets are going to win. Of course they are. You know, you know, not, not every bonus bet that you gamble yeah. loses. So the, the bookies have actually worked out that for that $100 bonus bet that they're giving you, they're going to lose $12.50. Well, it wouldn't be hard. They just calculate all the bonuses and, and look at the profit and loss yeah. of those. But people might be saying that what do you mean $12 it means everything like every oh, single every fucking single data over average, the long term over yeah. everything exactly. over the so law of large numbers yeah. they're, they're, they know this because that's what their business model is yeah. so you'd hope that they know it so yeah and they're happy to lose that 12.5% yeah. because yeah. they know that all it does is encourage well, you to bet into those markets it encourages you because you think oh, I'm going to get a bonus bet back so I'm going to bet on this race correct. and when you don't get a bonus bet back you lose it all Correct. so the bookie makes 100% of that bet even though they lose 12.5% of the bonus they Psycho give psychological turn of that is called aversion to loss so you expect to lose less than you actually are losing however you don't realize you're actually going to end up losing the bonus too yeah so they've fucked you in the head by giving you the bonus and then you've donated the bonus back so you're down whatever you put on the bet plus you're down well you're not down the bonus but you don't get anything back yeah, from you've the lost bonus because you lost it correct yeah so you're still down it's very very smart but so, now that we are talking about down and results and money yeah, yeah. nice little segue i mean we, we've done really well um we got you know got some feedback everyone wanted some more general betting discussion yeah. and we've i think we've nailed that tonight but yeah Obviously, we still want to talk about our that results. Pod, the cameras are overheating because yeah. of the fucking <laughs> podcast quality this tonight. So, so I thought we let's uh, let's dive into the results. Obviously, it's been we had a really slow June. It was to be expected. I think yeah. we, were, we were pretty we we're pretty aware that in June can be a really tough period. It's the tracks start to get really heavy. The horses we're not really sure where they are at their preparations. It does get a little bit trickier. The data still suggests that we make profit, and we were profitable again during June. But obviously, it's a little bit tougher. A lot of tipping services don't even operate in June. But now. As we said, we sounded like a broken record. You know, stick around. You got through June. Enjoy the fruits of July, August, September, October, November, December. We made 190 units last year during that period. And we're very vocal about, you know, stick around. We've not seen anything that we haven't seen before. And maybe, Steve, you want to talk about what's happened over the first can three I mean, and a half weeks can I just of July? Butt in before we even say that. I don't, like, obviously, I'm now on board with the system. Um, you guys were more on board at the start. But I don't even think we expected to see what's happened in the last four weeks. And I'll let Steve talk about it. 
I was more frustrated because obviously now I'm behind the customer service and I can see the people who are jumping in and out, whatever. We had a, a pretty big influx start of June and then we had a massive outflux, as you like to call it. Obviously, we're getting people coming in all the time and out. Um, people have different things on. They play footy. They're understanding how it works. They're coming back. They're learning. They say, I'll come back in spring. They're sorting themselves out. Maybe get their accounts ready. All, all sorts of different reasons. A lot of the reason is because they, they were too impatient due to that period because it was ranging. Um, and now, obviously, those guys, Steve, tell them what happened. Yeah, well, it's been... It's been pretty fucked. Like, <laughs> just an absolute fill-up of the last four yeah. weeks, to be honest. I reckon, you know, normally we have sort of one of these Saturdays every sort of five, six weeks, um, generally just over, you know, over our data. Our Saturdays pr- uh, previously have been probably larger. We've definitely gotten a lot more consistent in our results. So, you know, we've had 15-unit days where they used to be sort of 20-unit days probably a year ago because we used to tip a little bit differently, but we've changed our ways to try and improve our... Um, overall results and, and that includes becoming more consistent Saturday, Saturday. Anyway, long story short, we've had basically four fill-ups in the last four four Saturdays, which yeah. is just honestly um, like it's unreal and it's a real reward for everyone who has stuck on through that ranging June. Um, it can be pretty um, emotionally testing to, to be put through sort of tougher days. We had a negative eight unit day in there um, yeah, as well. Six worst sure. ever. Well, six that was the worst. vlog day. We're going to post the vlog. That's right. Probably within the next couple of weeks as well. Um, but then you look, yeah, the last the last four weeks we've had an absolute fill up. And honestly, I'm shattered that Randwick got abandoned on Saturday because the way we were going, we would have gone plus 15 if we could have outlaid yeah. an extra 10 units. But We do, eight. Uh, plus eight, eight point five or eight and a half, and or only something like twenty like outlays, but something. only twenty units outlays. Yeah. So, so the Saturdays, it's gone. What is it? 15, 15, 15 eight, yeah. or something like that. 50, yeah. Yeah. Profit. Yeah, the, the the monthly profit is like fifty four point seven. We're right? on the verge yeah. of literally our best month ever. Fifty three point four. And one Wednesday and a Saturday, hopefully to hopefully Wednesday. Um, yeah. But what at we least need? a Saturday, About two or three units. We only need like one and a half units. One half, yeah. I mean, it, it's irrelevant. Like obviously, yeah. the system doesn't matter what it makes this day or next day. But but I nice think I think record. probably the most telling stat and something that really blows my mind and. I reckon you said, you know, it's probably something that you didn't really expect or we didn't really expect um, to have a, a month this well. Honestly, we were due for it. Um, I know, know that sounds like a real game. such gambling. a mug thing. That yeah. sounds like we such a mug thing. You're the guy doing the data, so you No, I know, but like literally, happen. like we, we have had probably, oh, I don't know, a, a few months where, well, we, we had it, I think it was obviously June not too well, but March and April, we didn't do as well as I expected we would. Um, so I thought we were... There's a couple of units there to grab and literally as it all as we always say, it all comes out in the wash. And it's just another perfect example of it. We didn't quite I would I didn't expect we'd do this well in July. Um, but I expected we'd do a lot better in March and April, because March and April has historically been very, very profitable. Um, but you know, it all comes out in the wash and you know, we, we, we cashed in here. Um, and the thing that is most amazing about it is We've, we're at 53.4 units profit um, so far for July, and that's off 114 units outlaid. Now, to put that into perspective for everyone else, the last, our biggest month ever is 55.9 units, um, and that was last March, hence why I expected us to do you know better in March this time around. That was off 241 units outlaid, so literally more than double the amount of units outlaid um, for basically the same profit. So that's for a number of reasons. Um, probably the the two major reasons firstly is sustainability sustainability obviously we've cracked down massively on sustainability so we've literally shown right there we've outlaid well, what does that mean sorry just for people not yeah. listening so ultimately oh, we understand yeah ultimately we're outlaying less units for the same amount of profit yeah so which why? means yeah we, and why we're doing it one one firstly because the bookies are are getting stricter well, the game's changed the game's changed so you we have, have to, to yeah. change we have to adapt so yeah why why are we trying to be more sustainable yeah, so as yeah. I was saying that, before, And then what does that mean? Yeah, well, before, yeah. obviously, before the cameras cut out, we were talking about sustainability in a sense that, you know, whatever the bookies offer us, we're going to try and use that in a way to make profit. But obviously, the game changes, the way that they ban people changes, the way that the promos are outlaid on different days changes, and that affects how and when we tip. So we've changed that. We've reeled it in because we're focusing on sustainability. And what we're telling our subscribers is that, yes, we might make, you know, a tiny bit less profit in the short term, but the reality is we're here for you. We want, you know, we want our subscribers to be here for 6, 12, 18 months. Yeah. And the only way to be able to do that is to have your accounts, right? And we're averaging 34 units profit a month. So to keep all of your accounts alive is going to be way more important and way more profitable for you in the long term than making a bit extra one or two units a month to outlay a lot more units. So that's what we've changed at the moment. And as Steve was saying, you know, we've had a really, really efficient month. And really it, efficient. Just to add on, I know you want to wrap it up, but just to talk about sustainability, this is obviously why now I'm part of the system mainly. Um, 
it's not just about outlaying less units. It's also s- selecting yeah, yeah, the where, races. Sorry, I'm more, more like more selective yeah. as to well, which no, races and when yeah, we're going to be betting into races. Because I've seen another service pop up and they were tipping with XYZ subs with one bookie possible. And it's like yeah, well, that's just a great silly. way to just get all your people banned. And this is yeah. the type of stuff that obviously we are incorporating but, into this but like whole thing. a bit of blowing wind up our own asses here yes we've t- we've tipped a lot less um units and you know due to the reasons that you guys have pointed out but our profit relatively hasn't dropped anywhere near no. near the same amount um so i mean put that down to analytics put that down to you know improving the way that we are going here but the data is showing we have massively yeah. improved the first seven months of this year compared to the first seven months of last year our like Return on investment as such, even though it's a poor term um, for what we well, do. Yeah, it is, it is it's, yeah. Outlay. Basically, I've got two, yeah, two figures here. Um, I won't get you know too into it, but basically, the the profit we make per unit outlay for the first seven months of the system existing basically was 0.13, and we've up that to 0.17. So, um, 0.04 of a unit extra for every single unit. So, yeah. for every single ten dollar bet that you put on, you're making an extra forty cents now with us now compared to what you were a year ago, yeah. which is actually a pretty telling stat. Yeah, well, well, a guy actually jumped off that's been a long-term sub and he sent me this long email about a conspiracy theory that he thinks the bookies are beating our system now because we're profiting less, looking like yeah. this was before this massive period. He yeah. jumped off in like June, mid-June. And I said to him, look, that stat there, the ratio, mm. or is it thereabouts? Relativity. It's not the same. And yes, you're making less but we're still profiting yeah, each, our, and that's now gone up because of that. Yeah, our, our, total, our total unit's profit in the first seven months last year is higher than our total unit profits in the first seven months this year, but we've outlaid literally half the amount of units. Yeah, that's crazy. So, we, so our profit should be half, but our profit, I think it was, what is it? It was 250 units last year off 2,000 units outlaid. It's 183 units profit this yeah, year that's, that's off, half off a 1,000 units yeah, outlaid. Yeah, that's amazing. That's which elite. is it's just an absurd increase. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's just, I mean, we're, we're iterating, we're constantly improving. Obviously, people who have been on with the system for, you know, 12 months would months. have seen we, yeah. we introduced three unit players, we introduced half unit players, we've, you know, we've continuously made changes um, and we, we've, we've started selecting better races as well to, to outlay maxim, maximal units, well, I the, suppose. The, so. We've also got now 370 all-time high, so we have to consider that too. Mm. So we, we have to cater the service to, to those, that yeah. amount of people. If we we're doing this on our own, we'd be tipping differently or doing things differently Absolutely, we because would. we know we can do it. But for them, we have to cater towards everything. Like, this is why it's so complex because sustainability, profit, um, obviously it's catering, juggle, it's catering to more act. people. Yeah, you yeah. have to yeah. consider like exactly... 75 people betting on the same tip. Yes. Like, you have to make sure that it works for everybody. And yes, yeah. we could tip into more races for sure, yeah. but that could be at the expense of either our sustainability or at the expense of the subscribers' accounts. And that's... Yeah. You know, that's the biggest thing that we're worried about in the future is that, you know, people could get linked. So we're not going to bet into races where there's one bookie, yeah. two bookies, because it just opens up. It's just a, too much of a risk factor. And although that they're, you know, as Steve said, we're going to make like 0.0, what is it? One seven dollars profit for every unit of every dollar that we outlay, for example, mm. every unit. But and uh, for anybody that hears that goes, well, why don't you just keep outlaying units? We're going to mm. keep making profit. Yeah. Yeah. And we would. But you'll lose your we account. Could do this but, if, but if we, you never, yeah. we, we used to do that. Yeah. We, we used to outlay more and more units. Literally, look at last year. We did make more units yeah, yeah. profit. We outlaid more units. But is, 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 is that risk reward stuff. worth it? There was now more promo. Sustainability yeah. wasn't as much of a factor. And now, obviously, the bookies are onto it. You see match betting services and promo Man, tipping people services pop up. Every, yeah. So yeah. People Fucking, are getting banned left, right, and fucked. center. It's like, oh, yeah. I started up this week. Banned, banned, banned. It's like, bro. That's why. I think we could uh, definitely touch on that next, next podcast. Time. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, this has been an elite podcast. Like, I feel like we're, we're getting, you know, we're getting more and more really positive feedback. Yeah, yeah. We're getting some great comments from our subscribers. People are randomly finding us on YouTube shorts. They're finding us yeah. everywhere. We're getting out there. Hopefully people that listen to this and watch this do take little bits away yeah. from it and think about their betting a little bit differently. And of course, obviously for anybody that does think that we're interesting or wants to jump on board, you know, subscribe to our YouTube, subscribe yeah. subscribe to the Spotify, flick us a DM on Instagram. The best involved. place would be Instagram or comments of YouTube to, if you want to like yeah, get yeah. a question answered. Just want to add two things. We are going to be moving this podcast with the three of us onto another Spotify called The System. So subscribe to that. It'll get posted on the YouTube for The System if you're watching this. It'll also get posted on The Hustle Squad as well. But we want to try and get the traffic over there for this podcast so it's easily organized in just the system podcast. The second thing is we will be uh, launching the vlog that we filmed in June. It's been a long time coming, but 
it was a, a six worst day ever, um, <laughs> funnily enough, but we don't care. Great. We just want to show you guys how it all works. So if you're interested to see that, I think it's a really good watch just to kind of see what goes on behind the scenes. But yeah, another good podcast. It's nice to kind of give people some value without, I guess, making them pay. Um, but yeah, if you want to get and involved. I, I think yeah. people are enjoying it. We had a comment today on Instagram on one of the videos I did. The guy, A guy said, I'm not a sub, mate, but keep up with these videos. Yeah. He's like, I've learned so much just on, you know, seeing your videos over time. Obviously, we, we put up a lot of things to try and educate people. Um, yeah, so it's really good to, really great to hear that feedback, to be honest. Really no, appreciated good. it. Yeah, we've also got people on the other side, but we're not going to stop anytime soon. So if you want anything yeah. answered or you want to know, just DM our Instagram. That's Subscribe, the best way. Subscribe, DM, and then obviously, as yeah. we do for every little podcast, we are at the end. So if you made it to the end, cheeky little we discount code. It? We'll call it Camera 10 this time Perfect. because our cameras have been Overheat fucking pain 10 in the or ass. Camera yeah. 10 or something. Camera so camera 10. 10, if you hit us up with a DM or use that code in the checkout, you'll get a little discount. So well done for listening. Perfect. Good right. stuff. See you guys next week. See you later. Cheers, guys. Do we not need her in here in case the microphone... Uh, They're all on, yeah? No, as in, does, is that going to run out after 30 minutes? Like no, no, we've got charging, oh. everything. SD no, you don't say if you don't want to. I was just SD curious. cards are max, 128 gig, oh. two hours and 40 minutes of content and all on charge. Fuck, this is going to be I've just been rinsing. I've just been rinsing. Bro, make it so it's like at least... Seems like this. Out of your mouth. G'day, guys. Yeah. Welcome to the podcast. They've got different colour and one's way smaller. That one's got a pointy nose. Or maybe this one. That's fucking tiny. Look at the size of that. Are they babies? Yeah, ones they're the different ages. She's nine weeks now. Nine weeks? I only saw one that you weren't eating. Yeah, well, I used to have some. Mm. Oh, yeah? What else? I didn't actually try them in South America. I was way younger. I found it too whack. It was fucking weird. Call on me. <laughs> Bro, you know that camera's too hot. Too hot? It turned off. Oh, for fuck's sake. Too hot? But that one, I turned it off before. Like, to change the settings. Yeah. Wait, well, haven't we used those? What? Read that comment. Read this comment. Is this the new phone? No. no. Read that comment and then fucking check his bet slip. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. This is, what is this going to be paying? <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened? Some bloke has asked him, thanks mate, only gives me multi... No, he's like, how do I put a Yankee bet on? And then he says, tell him how to. And then he's like, thanks mate, only gives me a multi option, not a Yankee bet. So he boosts it and puts 100 on it for 1.2 million collect. Man, you can't even get that fucking amount back, you idiot. Uh, you just can't. donated 200k to the book. <laughs> That's fucked. <laughs> 100. <laughs> 100 on it, I thought it was going to be like a dollar or something. <laughs> He's at 100 on a 12,000 to 1 multi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, $12.5 dollar odd. <laughs> that was so defeating. <laughs> Fuck me! Which one is it? <laughs> oh, man. I can tr- oh. Is it done? I thought we were flying then. Um... Can you Is get it, it on? recording that though? Yeah. How does it not lose that when the battery goes off? Yeah, it remembers. It remembers. <laughs> what was I going to say? Have you... Fucking hell. Remember, remember, when he went, remember when he... Remember when he... Came on that video What's and he was midday? like... <laughs> <laughs> What's midday? <laughs> that was the fucking best thing when he entered that fucking video. Where we were sitting there like, oh, about time. He's like... <laughs> Sorry, lads. <laughs> I went to school last year with who is in one of your who is in one of your podcasts in May, and seeing someone I actually know have success has really made me want to get a part of it. Yeah, that's sick. And continue betting the way that we did. You are fucking kidding me. Fuck, we're so we're literally five minutes from finished. Oh, home. <laughs> fucking hell, bro! We're on the home straight. I'll happily have a free month. I'm the one with the ego that thinks I can do it myself, but I definitely can't. I'm shocking. Give him the money. No, not him. No, I was gonna say. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, he was. I was like, I was. I just wanted to reply. We'll at least try to answer the question, brother. I think it's quite simply that it's quite rare to find a tipping service that's actually profitable. No, so many scams out there over the last five years, and add on to that, 
and add on to the scams and the free tips pages that lose, it is drilled into the mind that all tipping pages pretty much lose and paid services are scams because you can't beat the bookie. So actually the free tipster that loses is a genuine good yeah. bloke because he isn't trying to scam anyone. Rather, he's tr seen as trying to help everyone win money despite losing. So you're spot on. It's, oh, well, he's a good bloke for trying. We'll give him yeah. a crack and follow his tips. I did actually, That's yeah, pretty yeah. much what you said in the video, isn't That's it? That's pretty much what I said though, yeah. yeah. Collingwood asked, they put a tweet saying everybody sent in your videos of the goal. Yeah, right. And then they um, edited them all together from all different uh, yeah. angles through the kick. It's actually genius. Yeah, That's very smart. Man, I saw SCN say it's the greatest goal in history. I was like, shut no. the fuck up. The actual literally. process to the goal <laughs> and the goal was literally elite. It was mad, 100%. Yeah, but, but like, you've got to be smarter. Coast to coast in 17 seconds and the slotted it from 50. Yeah, but hang on. Who's, who are they playing against? The who are they playing? That would hey, never any, happen against Geelong. Yeah, true. But still. Yeah. Or Melbourne. The fact that they still executed it. Yeah, it's min, but uh, it's not the greatest goal in history. Yeah. You've got to relax. I think the greatest goal in history would be Dom Sheeds from the boundary. Yeah, I'd put it up there. <laughs> I was actually, yeah. That's... Comment that. Thank you. I was so worried. We were just sitting here. Yeah, I was waiting. Oh, I wasn't filming. <laughs>